So, welcome. Uh, this short talk will also be a kind of uh, introduction for the lectures by Natasha Illich, Alexander Keith, and Clara Davis as well. The exhibition as a medium. Exhibitions shape objects and themes they present, as well as the viewer. During the Cold War, exhibitions were also part of cultural diplomacy. The Congress for Cultural Freedom, the CCF, organized several exhibitions, which I will share with you in this uh, short talk. But also, I will show you the critical reception and the emergence of a kind of anti-imperialist models of exhibitions. The first exhibition that we found in our research that I have done uh, here together with my colleagues Ansel Franke, Nida Gus, and Antonia Mashaka is the exhibition Masterpieces of 20 Centuries, uh, 1952. Okay. As you see, the exhibition took place uh, in two locations, in Paris and the Musée d'Art Moderne and in Tate in London. We were very happy when we found a film of the exhibition that would allow us to enter in the medium of the exhibition to see the relation among objects, uh, what are the operations, what is happening, that are the questions that lead us when we want to interrogate the exhibition as a medium, what is getting transformed, what are the performances. But we were a bit disappointed since the film uh, focus at that time, the sensibility of the medium of exhibition you could see was not so developed. So the film footage mainly focused on the canvas by Picasso, by Leger, even not the complete canvas by details, Duchamp. Anyway, this uh, will help me to introduce you the canon of modern art that the masterpieces of 20th century rehabilitated in 1952. Fortunately, it is around three seconds of the complete film where you could see the relations, the space, the viewer, and in one installation shot also the view of Mondrian. We, we have tried to find the history of exhibitions beyond the storytelling, beyond the description of single artworks, but uh, interrogating the context, the infrastructures, and this kind of global enterprise that the CCF uh, implemented um, somehow allow us to uh, deal with uh, bigger uh, frameworks and uh, different questions. Therefore, we privilege also somehow a method that we called among us the unpacking of exhibitions, a kind of deconstructions, where we could see also the importance of the press releases, things that we do also by assuming that this uh, a natural practice. We also want to uh, interrogate these documents as a project based on the research. Here we could see in this excerpt, the purpose of the exhibition is to bring into focus the richness of over half century contribution to Western culture. And here I will answer the question of yesterday, if the Congress for Cultural Freedom, the CCF, was only rehabilitating modernism, addressing a canon of the past, or if what was their contribution to the present and to the future generations in the realm of exhibition making. So here, an, a contribution which we believe would not have been possible except in the climate of freedom. So here is, uh, somehow the slogan that the CCF was promoting, in which the great artists, composers, and writers of our time have worked. So the exhibition, as you read in this uh, excerpt, the art exhibit will consist of 120 to 150 paintings and sculptors now being collected in Europe and America from public and private collections. Particular consideration will be given to paintings which have not been seen in Europe for the past 20 or 30 years. Although this exhibition, the masterpieces of 20th centuries, is not is little known, uh, we uh, consider this one of the secret uh, paths of uh, the CCF, perhaps due to the disclosure in 1967, when it was published in many newspapers that the CCF was receiving finances by the CCF, all his legacy became a kind of taboo. 
Nevertheless, the masterpieces of 20th century uh, that rehabilitated the narrative of modern art, remember that in, during the National Socialism, art, uh, modern art was considered Bolshevik, un-German, childish, crazy, and of course, degenerate art, as the exhibition 1937 was entitled, Entartete Kunst. And uh, the masterpieces of 20th century was prior, three years before Documenta. We see even the same Andrian, Henk, in Documenta first, 1955. But the, the CCF, the acronym we will follow, did not only uh, use exhibitions as an operation, we could say, to rehabilitate the past modern avant-garde, as was the question of yesterday. They also developed a new genre of exhibition that they called the Young Painters Exhibitions. This is the first example, that there was a traveling exhibition in Rome, in uh, Brussels, and in Paris. And here we see the uh, Junge Maler der Gegenwart, uh, the young painters of the present. It was very striking when we find all these installation shots in the Chicago Library in a folder without title, without year, and we have to research what was this exhibition that contained a historical uh, section with didactic panels. Natasha Illich also will uh, develop a, a lecture dedicated on the didactic exhibition. And here we could see how the modern uh, avant-garde are displayed in these historical panels together with quotes by several authors, but also you might recognize in the middle, the abstract expressionism by Jackson Pollock. So somehow we see how this US chapter of art history is inscribed in this broader tradition of modern art. Skip one. And how the young generations then were presented in the next section also logically were seen as extensions developing uh, the tradition that was presented in the historical part. So there could be an answer of the question of yesterday if they only dedicated their program to uh, rehabilitate, to tell the story in a different way of modernism, we would see how this story would change uh, the values from uh, degenerate, as I said, childish, and German, uh, Bolshevik, into the symbols of individualism, internationalism, uh, and universalism as well and of course, freedom. In this exhibition, for example, I have a quote to share with you. Herbert Reed, a very well-known art historian at the time, state, the style in which this art is painted is no longer distinctively French. Here comes the international uh, display of the exhibition. It is international. And he continues, anyone aware of the typical manifestations of the post-war generation in all countries represented in this exhibition must admit this new style has spread everywhere like a forest fire. So we see that in the selection of artworks and, and in the categories, in the criteria of display, they were not anymore by nation divided, but uh, they were as international section. This allow a Japanese artist, we would see also that exhibited in CCF exhibitions in Japan, to be next to Yves Klein. That would have been impossible if they would have applied the previous criteria of the schools, the French school, for example. Here we see uh, the exhibition antagonism that in fact was an iteration of the previous young painters of Vienna. Here the exhibition was arranged by themes and although the title is very interesting, it's antagonisms and here is, uh, is, is one important point to focus. It was not about political antagonisms. It, it, uh, as as uh, Herbert Reed also expand there in the, in the catalog, it meant to describe the internal antagonisms, the unconscious antagonism and interrogations of the artist. Let's see the, the quote. The struggle is spiritual and not political, and the rivalries are individual and not national. So here comes the definition that uh, MoMA also will promote of a modern art mainly apolitical. We will see how even artworks like uh, Motherwell that were dedicated to the civil war will be described uh, as f in the paradigm of formalism in the diagram of Alfred Barr. For Reed, the essence of art on display consisted in the unconscious exploration of free expression, but the free expression of the individual. 
Contemporary painting is authentic insofar as the painter discovers this free form. Today, we're quite sure, based on research on modern psychologists, that this form must be discovered in the very spirit of the artist. One reviewer noted ironically, anyway, in, the, in a newspaper in France, these young painters have claimed total liberty, and here they are dangerously limited to themselves. So somehow this freedom was too individual for this review with a limit. And, uh, and I want to share with you how this, this new uh, kind of new genre of uh, young artists, they were under 35, continue to be promoted by the CCF also in Japan. Here we have the uh, cross clipping of, one of the first uh, young Asian uh, art exhibition. And also continue with the program in, in Chile, in Santiago, where I was born. Uh, La Sala Libertad, Galer uh, Freedom Gallery, founded in uh, 1958. It's interesting that the program was based uh, uh, mainly on, on abstract artists, uh, influenced uh, from informalism from Spain. You see here the first, El, El, El Segundo Salón de Arte Abstracto, the second uh, Salon of Abstract Art. And what is very uh, interesting that many communist artists at that time that uh, had to, to, to intertwine many of the stories, Pablo Neruda had, uh, uh, in, had organized a, a boat called the Winnipeg to invite uh, many dissidents of Franco to come to Chile. Uh, in this boat came Jose Valmes and Gracia Barrios that became very influential in the art scene. And they brought also the influence of uh, later of informalism. They came in the, in the, in the, in the 30s. And Balmes, that was a fervent uh, communist, also participated in Freedom Gallery without knowing, of course, that it was backed up by CIA uh, money. And here to reinforce what we discussed yesterday with uh, the technical assistant of the Modern Museum uh, uh, of American Art in, in Berlin, here I would like to follow this debate. I would wish that the debate would be even stronger among these two figures between the diagram by Alfred Barr that we know was published in 1937 and the critique of Mayor Shapiro telling how this historiography of Barr and subsequently of MoMA and many of the Museum of Modern Art that were founded after the model of, of MoMA is an art history that is uh, intrinsically formalistic, does not include the context. Let's, let's evoke uh, Mayor Shapiro, that from the readings I have done, everybody described him as the best uh, rhetoric and speaker of the time. So I, I wish we could once find the film of Shapiro, but let's try. Although Barr sets out to describe rather than to defend or criticize abstract art, he seems to accept its theories on their face value in his historical exposition and in certain random judgments. In places, he speaks of this art as independent of historical conditions, as realizing the underlying order of nature and as an art of pure form without content. And remember here also Greenberg, definition of the American type painting, as he call it, is a painting without subject matter, is a painting about painting, a flat, uh, the brush stroke, etc. And when Barr describes what is this new American painting, he also says it's the size, it's the scale, it's the lack of center. So it's a formalist description. And he explicitly will tell in some of the catalogs of the traveling exhibitions these artists, including Marwell, they are not politically engaged. So let's continue with Mayor Shapiro. Hence, if the book is largely an account of historical movements, you see the diagram. Barr's conception of abstract art remains essentially unhistorical. He excludes as irrelevant to its history the nature of the society in which it arose, except as an incidental, distracting, or accelerating atmospheric factor. The history of modern art is presented as an internal, immanent process among the artists. Abstract art arises because, as the author says, Presentational art has been exhausted. So figuration has been exhausted. At the end of the 60s, so after almost two decades of programs of traveling exhibitions and after many uh, 
three decades after uh, Alfred Barr diagram. The program of international exchanges arrived in India, Tokyo, and Australia with this uh, exhibition, Two Decades of American Painting, with a very nationalistic cover. Um, and Greenberg accompanied the exhibition uh, to India and offered a seminar and exchange with the art scene. Uh, Greenberg, that was part of the American Committee for Cultural Freedom, uh, was in exchange with the CCF member in the American, from the American wing, wrote a report that is unpublished that we found in the Smithsonian, and with this uh, quote that you see, art is all over the non-communist world, are avant-garde today, especially those in the generation un under 40. So somehow for him, it was this universal language of abstraction, rhymes at the end of the 60s. And to finish shortly with the, with the more or less, we could present the alternative uh, models. Later on, so after the disclosure, but also in, uh, in the specific context of, of Chile, we could see also other exhibitions that raise and, and they address the context, the social conditions of possibility, and explicitly political. I wanted to compare so the Cold War does not get uh, the story dominated by the narrative of the CCF or MoMA, but to, to also to differentiate and see uh, also hegemonical uh, projects like Venice Biennale in 1974 that you see was dedicated to the anti-fascist cause, especially against the dictatorship in Chile. And here is a tent that Guillermo Núñez is an artist in the exhibition. I was in his studio last week. This is a portrait he did. We have other portraits in black and white. Uh, after he presented an exhibition in 74 during the dictatorship, it was censored and, and he had to go, uh, so he was uh, taken from, from the house and was tortured in prison for several months. And uh, he participated then uh, into this exhibition, sending an idea of a tent. He could not attend because uh, he was in prison. Uh, and his collaborators developed a collective pra practice uh, that they sign as the brigades, Las Brigadas Artísticas, realizing more than eight murals in different spots in Venice. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, Roberto Mata also participated, and here he wrote in this mural, Ángel Atacado por los United Snakes of America. So how Latin America was attacked by the United Snakes. Um, and to finish, also to see how abstraction, after expressionism, was not implemented or as assumed in, in every scene or was not rejected just because of, of coming from US, we could see how the Nicaraguan artist, Armando Morales, uh, somehow break this assumption of uh, abstract expressionism as apolitical. And with the title, you could see how he's honoring a revolutionary. And somehow he's skipping uh, the apolitical definition of MoMA International Program of Abstract Expressionism and coming to the root of the very practice of the artist Motherwell that dedicated all this series, as I said before, to the Civil War. And to finish, also Fidel Castro, although he was, of course, uh, associated with the Soviet Union program, political, economically, and cultural, abstract expressionist art it had supported him against Batista the dictatorship that was before the revolution. So for him were his allies. So he promoted many exhibitions of abstract expressionism that I had to find the images. Uh, and he stayed one day uh, grateful to this group. Our enemies are capitalist and imperialist, not abstract art. Thank you. Thank you.